Hey, it's John and Mike, BrewDashDudes.com. Today we have something for you. We got an email from one of our viewers on the YouTube channel, and he had some questions about water chemistry. John from New Jersey. We can't help you. Thanks for writing in. Oh, come on. Oh. We can help him because he's a viewer of our channel. He had some specific questions about water chemistry, and it's funny. I think that uh, our, the water profiles of um, people who live in the Northeast very similar. Yeah. He actually sent over a couple of questions, and and also his ward is a ward, ward lab, labs, lab yeah. water report. And uh, it's the same thing that Mike and I have been talking about for years. That if we want to brew roasty malt forward beers with our tap water, they come out great. If we want to brew sort of yellow uh, hop forward beers, not so much. Not so much. Now, there's something they that come out good. They come out good, but, but not maybe great. they could be better. They maybe, can't, maybe they could be better. I, not, not even maybe. Okay. Not even maybe. Like I, I would taste them right, like like with like West Coast IPAs, yeah. and they're just different. You know, because like remember, okay. like if we go back in time, we say to ourselves, when I was introduced to hoppy beers. There was Sierra Nevada, and I would say this is interesting. It had a mineral back, you know, flavor. There's something there that I was unable to reproduce in beers that I sure. made at home, and I think that a lot of that had to do. I like I would even try to change the way that I would um, add hops uh, into the boil and such, mm -hmm. and still just wasn't as bright as those West Coast uh, beers were. So. So he had a few questions. He sent us over his, John from New Jersey, he sent over his uh, Ward Lab report, had a few questions. So Mike, why don't you talk about the questions he asked, and then let's see what, what we can do to answer those questions about water chemistry and just how do you make a great hoppy beer with the water that we have yeah. here in the Northeast? All right. Like most of us, he talks about water chemistry being the last frontier for him, and I think that's... That's what it should be. Mm -hmm. When you master the brewing process itself and you're happy with your beers, that's the time to go after water chemistry. Not when you first start doing all grain brewing. Okay, and diatribe. Um, he's seen a lot of stuff about water chemistry, but he's still confused about when he should add the salts. Yep. Where in his process should I be adding these brewing salts? Um, he basically says his water's lacking everything. He sent us his Ward Labs report. I'm going to go over that really quick. Um, he says he makes great Scottish ales and great porters, and he thinks that's because his water is lacking everything, that those beers come out good, but his IPAs just aren't great. Um, what he does do is he adds 8 grams of gypsum and 4 grams of calcium chloride into the boil, which seems to help his 5-gallon batches. Now, I don't know if that specifically means 4 IPAs or 4 his other beers, but we're going to assume that means IPAs. And John, if you're watching, you can leave a comment below. Yep. Yep. Um, so he gave us the, the, the water report. So what he really wants to know is, can we give him some pointers on how to have not an overly bitter beer, but to have that hop aroma come through and be magical. Right. Yeah. Uh, magical is my word, not his. <laughs> um, so it is magical, though. It I mean, is magical. What he's done right is magical. So let me just quickly give you some highlights. He gave us a, his water report. And I put his water report, I use, he says he uses Brewer's Friend, which is Kai Troister's big web page and stuff like that. I use the uh, Martin Brewing Guards water chemistry spreadsheet. So I put some of his numbers in there, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But his sodium level is 19 parts per million, calcium is 16, magnesium is 1. He's got a total hardness of 44 ppm. His chloride levels are 16. His carbonate level is less than 1. His bicarbonate is 80. His total alkalinity is 66. You've got, like, perfect water to build from. That's right. And I, and I say that from the standpoint of your sodium is low, yeah. your calcium is low, your sulfate is low, and your chlorides are low. Which means you can... Uh, we need to buy distilled water only because our sodium and our chloride are kind of high. Mm. And we need to add a ridiculous amount of gypsum to our water to even get close to a one-to-one -one sulfate to, to, to chloride ratio. Okay? So that said... I give those numbers for viewers at home if they want to plug in to some spreadsheet themselves and play around and see what we're talking about. All right? All right. So what I did is I made a basic recipe in my spreadsheet, which involves just some two-row, about eight pounds of two-row, a pound of Crystal 40, and some chocolate malt, half a pound of chocolate malt. 
And I just put those in there as a basic middle of the road recipe to get some water chemistry going up in this spreadsheet. With John's water, yeah. if he just puts that into his tap water, he gets a pH in his mash about 5.7. Okay, so that's a little bit high. Yeah. Meaning maybe your extraction, maybe your extraction or your conversion will, will, ha will suffer a little bit. Now, the thing with water chemistry is that doesn't necessarily mean, though, that with a longer mash, you won't get full conversion. And by longer, I actually mean just 60 minutes. Most people, people's mashes are actually done in 20 minutes, even though we all go 60 minutes. So you're probably not suffering, but it's just a point of reference. If you can check your mash pH, you can buy pH strips, check that out. It'd be 5.7. But he talked about adding 8 grams of gypsum and 4 grams of calcium chloride to his boil. John, if you add that stuff to your mash, not your sparge water, just your mash water, you achieve a pH closer to 5.2, which for, for a basic recipe. Yeah. Now that changes based on what you put in your recipe, but you can see that that now pushes your mash pH down into a better range, 5.2 to 5.4. And you'd still have that mineral quality transfer into the beer later on. So where do you add salts? You need to think about brewing salts in two different ways. This is how I've learned about it. There's your mash chemistry side, and then there's your flavor side, right? So there's no reason why you can calculate, in order to have a certain sulfite to chloride ratio, you might need to have this many grams of sulfate and this many grams of calcium, but maybe if you put all that in your mash, you get a bad mash pH. What you need to do is add only the amount of calcium. You really just need to focus on calcium, whether it be through sulfate or chloride or a balance of the two. How much calcium do I need to get into the mash to get the right mash pH? And then subtract that from what you want your total mineral profile to be, and the rest of it goes in the boil, right? Yeah. And that's how we do it. Yeah. You've done it that way. Yeah. I've done it that way. So you want to focus on using enough salt to get the right mash pH, and then based on whatever water profile you want it to taste like, you put that in the boil. And John Palmer has mentioned that part of the process is really sort of like seasoning soup, mm. right, at mm. that point. And, and you really should think about it that way too, is that maybe you're putting 8 grams of sulfate in the boil. Maybe you would put 10 grams in next time, just like you make a beer with half a pound of chocolate malt in it, and you say, this isn't roasty enough, so next time I'm going to put 10 ounces instead of 8 ounces. You should treat your water salts the same way when they're going into the boil kettle, is, is tweaking and adjusting. Um, so 8 grams to 4 grams actually gives you close to a 2 to 1 sulfite to chloride ratio. Which is what you want for hoppy Which, beers? For a hoppy beer, for yeah. a hop forward beer. I see. Now his primary question is, how do I make a beer that's not overly bitter, yep. but has got good hop aroma? Personally, yeah. it has nothing to do with water chemistry. Yeah. Water chemistry helps brighten, and sh it, sulfite helps to sharpen your bitterness. So if you were going for an IPA that was bittered with Columbus hops, and you wanted to have, hmm. like Columbus, Cinco, Chinook, you wanted to have that resiny, biting bitterness, then you need to have a lot of sulfite in there to make those hops sharp. But if you're shooting for something that's just bitter for balance sake, and then aroma, Water chemistry and aroma, as far as I'm concerned, and as far as I've read and seen, water chemistry and aroma don't necessarily have to travel together. So if you want something that's got great aroma and enough bitterness, focus on mash pH. What you're doing with 8 grams and 4 grams is probably going to work for your mash pH. And then just go with enough hops to bitter. Yeah. And then load up the back end with all the beautiful hops you want. Galaxy, Mosaic, throw it in there. Yeah. And you'll get great aroma. I think aroma is a pro more of a process issue. It's, it's driven more by process and amounts yep. and recipe than it is water chemistry. So try more adding hops at uh, flame out, do the whole whirlpool yeah. thing, and There's no shame dry in, hops. Yeah, no shame in dropping five ounces of hops like at two minutes to go to flame out. Or do a whirlpool, you yeah. know. Turn off the flame, put in five ounces of hops, put a lid on your kettle, yep. and give it another 20 minutes. Yep, before you chill. Before you chill. Yeah, and then and then proceed as normal. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I think that's a, that's worthy of trying rather than putzing with uh, water chemistry. Yeah, I I personally just don't think water chemistry 
and aroma are two parts of the same equation. It's definitely mash, it's more like bitterness, beer and, yeah. clarity, foam stability, right. all that stuff happens with the right mash pH. Yeah, and that's it's funny. That's and that's the, what we got out of the harvest ale too. And there were a lot of hops in the boil there. Yep. And I was trying to pull through um, more of uh, the bitterness and and and, and uh, flavor. There wasn't. I mean, I wouldn't say there was a lot of hop aroma at all. And it's because yeah. I wasn't adding a lot you towards the aroma end. hops in yeah, there. Yeah, right. And I mean, and people, that beer was all sulfate, all calcium sulfate. Yeah, yeah. 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 There was people distilled were, water, all calcium sulfate. Yeah. And people were asking like, "Oh, no dry hopping, no late." And I'm like, "No, that no. wasn't the goal. Was not the goal." And it's I didn't think. And that's the thing. Like with home, those home, this batch of homegrown hops, they weren't good aroma hops. Yeah. I mean, I did a lot of this, and I was like, hey, "It's yeah. not that great." But I still wanted to use them because I, you know, labored over growing them over the summer. <laughs> so they were going to be used for something, just yeah. not in not in the late stages of the the beer making process. I All hope right. that helps. I, I mean, that's helpful. I am just barely starting to scratch the surface for my own yeah. sake doing water chemistry. Um, but at this point in time, I think that's the soundest advice I can get. I think that water chemistry. Look, at water chemistry is important, but I think it's a little bit overblown um, in terms of its true impact. Um, malt wants to become beer. We've said that before, and other people, we, we're just repeating what other people have said. Um, even with our weird water, I've always noticed that if I just mix it together, um, I get, we get about a 5-4 ma mash pH. I mean, it, it works. And I did most of my all grain brewing before I really even started thinking about water chemistry. Yeah. And I was making great beer. So... Um, water chemistry is just another thing you can play with, but it's it's way down the list, way down the list. So it's really what you start fussing with when you're trying to go from you know good to great. I think the only time it matters is if you want to make one of those great IPAs. Yeah. You know. But on a side note, yes, New England IPA right. is chloride heavy. Yeah. Super cloudy beers, yep. and they're focused 100% on aroma. So that. That is has nothing to do I know, with, with them water, balancing. Yeah, it nothing. just has to do with pouring it on late in the process. So. Yeah, I think the only reason why I'm futzing with water chemistry is is two reasons. One, to make West Coast style IPAs or even just American pale ales, yeah. the ones that I grew up with, and two, yeah, English style yeah. bitters because there's sure. nothing like the beer you can get on tap at a pub. In England, and I'm trying to replicate that, and that requires me messing around with water, because there's just no. I have not been able to replicate the same kind of beer experience that I had across the ocean. But you know, but that might be part of it too. I mean, yeah. I'm not there. I'm here. Even Jamil talks about, you know, he was trying to make the, the you know, a great version of this German style. And uh, he couldn't do it, and it's because he wasn't sitting in an outdoor, you know, beer yeah, right, right, drinking. Con con context, right? It's, it's context huge. is yeah. part of it, but yeah. it, this sti but still, you know, my my taste memory remains that there's something that was, I, if I can get close, I'd be happy, and I think a lot of that has to do with water chemistry, so. Anyway, to be I continued, agree. I think there's more to explore here. There's always more to learn, yep. and uh, I like getting into water chemistry only be for exactly this reason, yeah. is that we have Where's a blog, it apply? we do YouTube videos, and if people are going to ask about water chemistry, you can't just say, I don't know. So, um, <laughs> and, I, and, and I am partly a chemist by training, so understanding it is important to me. That's what I said when I wrote back to John. I'm like, wow. You know that Galaxy Pale Ale, the success of that beer is going to hinge upon good water chemistry. Mm. I think Pale Ale's IPAs, <clears throat> water chemistry, have to have it. All right. So hopefully that was helpful. Uh, you're going to put the, the numbers in the comma, the description? Sure. <laughs> sure. Copy yes. and paste. I will copy, copy and, paste. and paste. Yeah, we'll put the numbers in there. I'm sure people weren't like... So, how many parts per million of oh. magnesium did you have? People don't write that stuff down. You guys just want to be taking notes. Just, just rewind it. Keep playing it. You're going to be taking notes. We'll take that. Anyway, thanks for watching. For John and Mike, brew-dudes.com. Brew on and water chem on. Cheers.